Hello, my name is Miss Reed and I'll be teaching the physics course this year. Some of the topics that we'll be covering are scientific measurements, the description and laws of motion, such as one-dimensional and two-dimensional forces, energy. Some of the techniques I use in the classroom, I will lecture showing step-by-step -step examples on the board because there are a lot of math problems in physics. And I also show videos to demo concepts. Um, once I'm done lecturing, showing step-by-step -step examples, I usually provide a hands-on project such as labs or word problems, uh, word problems that would look like this or maybe possibly this. And what we do is we work on those individually or maybe in groups and then we always go over the solutions. That way a student can see where their weakness and their strength is based on the concept that was presented to them. I also post YouTube tutorial videos for extra help and then I also post solutions to homework after the deadline because I want that to be an additional resource for them when they're studying for their tests and their tests are given every other week and prior to the test I will give them a practice test that way they can identify their weakness. Now here's an example of a video that I will play for them just demonstrating potential energy and it gives them an opportunity to watch the roller coaster move around the tracks. Here's another example I'll use a real life situation which incorporates an equation and then here's a word problem. The one thing I'd like to point out to you if you get a moment please take a, a second to read the welcome to physics announcement <clears throat> that I posted for the students. Most importantly, if you're monitoring their grades, when you go to the assignment link, again, I mentioned that the homework, the homework is graded on the process, not if the answer is correct. So if they put a lot of effort into the process, you're going to see a lot of hundreds for their homework scores. Where you truly need to evaluate how they're doing with the concepts and the grades is looking at the test scores. The test scores will let you know are they really thinking about their classroom work and their homework as they're working through the problems? Are they taking the time to study by working on the practice test? And are they preparing for the test? Because the test scores are 60% of their final grade. The topic area, this is where I will post um, additional help that's needed. For an example, I'll post step-by-step -step examples or I'll post uh, YouTube videos. Now these YouTube videos, I spend a lot of time evaluating videos and I make sure to pick out something that's not lengthy and a video that the student can, can easily adapt to and pick up the concept. Now my expectations for the course is to be respectful and time prepared and focused. Um, come to each class with a graphing calculator and a charged iPad. Be willing to learn when you enter the classroom and in complete and turn in assignments on time. If they are absent, I expect them to retrieve their assignment from on campus and ask me questions and to complete it in the number of days they were absent. And I always explain to students, use time effectively in the class because this will lead to more effective learning and it will result in fewer assignments that need to be completed at home. Time will be provided in class for students to start their work. However, any work that's not completed in class must be finished for homework. And they also stress that if they are not present, this does not exempt them from class work because more than likely they need to practice because it will be on the test. So my contact information, here's my email address. And if you would like to schedule a meeting with me, I have a, a Zoom meeting room or we can speak by phone. Just send me an email with a request and I will respond within 24 hours. Thank you for watching my presentation and I look forward to meeting you soon.